Welcome to the Celebrate Brave podcast. I'm Nicole Church Steinbach, your host and the international bravery coach for women in tech. I serve women all over the world to earn more money, create more opportunities, and thrive in the tech industry because tech needs all of us. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, brave people. Today, we have a special guest. Her name is Jen Kurtek, and Jen is a natural multi-hat wearing global traveler. I had to take a deep breath when I realized that she had been to over 40 countries because I'm at a mere 25, I think it's 27, and she's also American, so she was born in Philadelphia and is now living in Novi Sad, Serbia. In between Philadelphia and Serbia, she had about five careers, like I said, 40 countries. She and her husband have been traveling globally since 2018, so y'all know why she's on Celebrate Brave. Managed a bridal shop, which I was a laid back bride, but oh my goodness. Has done marketing, event and fashion show planning, and then she dove into digital marketing and SEO. So woman in tech, y'all. Now she is following her intuition and her passion. She's founded an e-commerce company called Add to Cart Designs. It's a really fun website, so go check it out. And she now supports clients all over the world to build and manage their online stores. She also writes for her blog, The Good, The Bad, and The Booze. The Morocco piece is wild, so check that out, as well as many other publications. So welcome, Jen. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. That was some intro. Thank you. So usually I dive into like, what's your brave story? But I'm going to totally go to the side and be like 40 yeah. countries. So yeah, for exactly 40 countries. And I think it's... Was that like your goal or... No, no, it just happened. We've done almost all the countries in Europe. Just where we've missed a few. So we're hoping to still hit them. We've also been to Southeast Asia. And then of course in the US. So, but we've done some odd ones that are our favorites. You know, like Ukraine, Georgia, Armenia. We love those places. We spent a ton of time in the Balkans. So we're here in Serbia now. But we also love Croatia, Macedonia, Bulgaria, all that, this whole region. We spent a lot of time here. We move about every month. But for two years, we moved every week. So for two straight years, we moved every five to seven days. So now with working online, it's a little harder. So we move just about every month. We're moving to a new place. That is incredible. <laughs> it's been fun. I thought I moved a lot. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Okay, so we know a little bit about your brave story already, but I want to make space for you to share it. As a fellow woman in tech, fellow global citizen, fellow globe trotter, <laughs> like what is the story of brave you want to share with our audience? I guess I actually have two. So the first one would be after working in the bridal shop and doing that for 10 years, I did marketing and I did fashion show and event planning for the bridal shop. It's just, we were both a little restless. We had gone on a couple of vacations to Europe and stuff like that. And we really just wanted to do something different. So we saved money and decided to just quit our jobs to travel. We did that for two years. So that was at first a little scary to leave behind we went all in, like house, cars, like we got rid of everything. So did it for two years. The only reason we had gone home when we did was because of COVID. We went home and our whole idea to start was that we were going to travel for a while and then go back to the U.S. and get jobs again and either save some money to travel or just get regular jobs <laughs> and go back to a normal life. We realized that we didn't want, like getting normal jobs at this point probably I don't even know if I can stay in the same place for a long time anymore, <laughs> but it was in the middle of COVID anyway. So there were no jobs available. So we went home to lockdown and this was in would have been March of 2020 that we went home. So it was right when things started to get really bad. 
Okay. We just sort of went like, maybe we should try to work online. So I started taking classes and in digital marketing. That's where I was, I have a background in marketing. So I thought this would be like a obvious step. Mm -hmm. I did trainings and stuff like that for several months. I got hooked up with a VA program to be a virtual assistant. And I got my first client pretty quickly and realized I didn't want to do digital marketing. I switched to e-commerce. So I spent... Oh, wait, 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 wait. How did you, how did you realize that you didn't want to do digital marketing? What, what, what were some of the symptoms? So the person I worked for was in the cosmetic surgery business. So trying to do like ad copy and Facebook advertising and stuff like that for like Botox. And I was like, this is not for me. It, it wasn't enough like creativity. Okay. And it just, I just was making a realization that I, even though I did that for so many years in the past, it was not something I wanted to do in the future. I was like dreading having to do this work. So that's made me realize that I probably shouldn't be doing this work. And of course, I had spent months now working towards this goal. Where did you feel the dread? I, that's just such a powerful statement. I felt the dread. Like, how did you feel that? And the reason I'm diving into that is because I have a lot of consultations with people who say, I don't like my job. And I say, well, how do you feel it? How do you experience it? What's going on? And so since you had this experience of dread and you made a difference, like share with our people, what did that feel like? How did that show up for you? I think towards the end of my job when I was working in the bridal shop, I had these like almost every day, this feeling of just not wanting to go to work, not wanting to do the work. It wasn't that I hated my job or I hated the people. It was just to this point that I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Like I've been doing this for so long and I'm just, I think sometimes people get stuck in these bubbles and it's really hard to even think about being outside of that particular bubble. So it was not to say that it was exactly the same feeling, but it was a little, it started to creep in a little bit that, so I did digital marketing. So I, I stuck with something that I was comfortable with because I had done it for so long. And I just thought that was what I should be doing. But I, right away, I just I started to feel like I was back going back into that bubble again. So I needed to like get out of the bubble. And that's when I got into doing e-commerce. And I just spent a month, I literally would do six to seven hours a day of classes and trainings. And I would do like free trials of websites like Shopify and Wix and all these things. Mm -hmm. I would sign up for their like two week free trial program and just build fake websites. So I could learn all of the ins and outs and the plugins and all that kind of stuff. And then I got my first client not too far after that. So that's where I am now. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so, this is, ah, I'm so excited about this. So I totally relate to the bubble because when I started thinking about leaving, I was with the same tech company for 13 years. The bubble was like, I couldn't see through the bubble. Like it was, it wasn't like, you know, I had this bubble and I could see this other side. I couldn't even see it anymore because everything was inside of this experience. And it was so scary to burst that bubble and I initially, I, you know, I had had recruiters coming to me and I was interviewing and I got these amazing offers, which I'm not going to describe here because my mom will cry if she listens to this episode <laughs> and I couldn't take them. <laughs> it felt wrong. They were amazing and it felt so wrong. And so, you know, choosing to shift and choosing to follow what I got excited about, what I was willing, like the way that you were willing to go on to these free trials and build to build the skill shows passion. And I was willing to do that as well, but it's terrifying. So I don't know about you, but like traveling and going to these other worlds, going to these other cultures, these other communities was far less terrifying than getting out of my professional bubble and doing something new. Like that was terrifying for you too. I have to agree with you. The traveling has always kind of come easy, minus the Morocco experience, which you mentioned, <laughs> you touched on. But um, that was like 
the only negative experience we've had in three years of and we're coming on three years of, of full-time travel now like june 3rd is uh 2018 is when i officially left my job i'm coming up on three years of full-time travel but the travel kind of always came easy like once i made we made that decision that we were i was leaving like i was leaving my job and i was going that never frightened me really but trying to figure out how to do this whole working online and starting my own business. And, you know, it's just you. It's so different. Like the other day I did my tax ID number for the first time and I had this weird moment. I was like, my entire life, I've just like did my taxes because I got my W-2s. Here I am like applying for an EIN number. Like it's kind of, it, it blows your mind a little. Like you have these weird moments I just had to take a 17 hour bus trip and across like two countries. And that doesn't bother me, but getting an EIN number was like freaked me out. (laughs) I relate to that so much. (laughs) (laughs) I would rather get my nine year old and my seven year old onto a bus for an eight hour trip than pull together all of the paperwork for my business. For sure. (laughs) Oh my goodness. So how did you guys, and I know that it was both of you. So bringing in the two of you, like what led you to make this huge, brave step? You knew what you didn't want. You went into your momentum, into your learning, into your experiencing, your acting. And then the amount of accountability and dedication, consistency, resiliency in your story is wonderfully. It's like gorgeous times 10. So what kick started the move inside of yourselves, inside of your marriage to do the unexpected? That's a good question. It started small. We would go on these trips. Like, so we'd go, we went on vacation to Croatia. We went on vacation to Portugal. So it'd be like a two week trip over Christmas holiday or something like that. And it would get to the end of the trip and we'd have like two or three days left and we'd be going, oh my gosh, we don't want to go home. Like, so, oh, we only have two days left. We only have one day left. So we started this conversation about what would happen if we had no days left? Like, what happens if we were not counting down the days to the end? This sort of like started this seed of us talking about it. We have, we watched a lot of, um, we have a lot of travel. I know you'll ask this question, but like the people that I, I looked up to and the people that I was watching are, you know, so I was seeing all this stuff that they were doing. Travel's always been something that I loved. I, I did my first trip when I was 16. I went to London and Paris when I was 16. So it's always been something that I've wanted to do more of. Luckily for me, my husband and I are on the same page. We have so much in common. Like there wasn't a lot of argument or anything on our side about this. We were in Ithaca, New York, actually in the Finger Lakes for a weekend trip. And we were just sitting there drinking wine. We should just do this. We should just quit our jobs and travel. Just do it. So that pretty much, we just decided then and there that this was something we were going to do and just figured out like what we had and what we had to save, what debts we had to pay off. So we didn't want to, we wanted to leave debt free. We wanted to leave. So we didn't have anything hanging behind. The worst part was telling our families. I think that was the most difficult part about the whole thing because they were like, what? (laughs) Okay. So that was going to be my next question. It's definitely not a normal thing to do is just quit your job. Yeah. And, and, (laughs) and one of the things that, so in my framework, the how to build your brave framework, it's episodes one through four. And then I think episode 20 is all of them together. So for listeners, if you're new and you want to know what the heck I'm talking about, there you go. In the clarity piece, tell it to your dentist. The third step is tell your three to five brave people. These are the people who are in your life, who are going to support you as you go through your transformational work to get to your goal, build your brave to get your goal. And a lot of people think that that's going to be really, really hard and some are right and some are wrong. So when you told your family, how did you experience that? You said that they thought you were crazy, right? But like, what was the experience for you that kept you moving forward into your momentum? 
honestly, I think we have, we just sort of got into this mindset that at what point do you start living your life for yourself and not living it for other people? Oh, so yes. one shot at this life. So it didn't matter. It almost didn't matter. Like we had to tell them, obviously we had to tell them, but <laughs> We just got so like knew that this is what we wanted to do that nothing that they really said to us was going to change our minds. And I think that was a little bit too about getting out of the bubble because you're you're living in it and you're not realizing that maybe you're just not that happy. What are you going to be doing to make yourself happy? So this is how we found to be happy. <laughs> I am speechless. I just want to repeat all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that like <laughs> genuinely I'm speechless because that is, we, we have this, we have this go around. I don't think either of us are suggesting like, oh, you have a little hiccup in your life. So you just throw everything away and you start over again. This is our go around, right? These are now my forties. I just turned 40. This is the decade I'm going to be in my forties. What do I want to experience? And Yes, if you're in the bubble and you're like mildly discontented, I don't think that we were created. I don't think that we are this miracle so that or this universe or whatever my beliefs. Are. I don't even know what I believe anymore. Like, oh, my gosh, changing everything has changed everything. But anyways, um, <laughs> you know, I don't think that I was created to be mildly discontented, to be mildly miserable. So what are you going to do about it? And and sharing that clarity with each other and that that experiential desire together that's just incredible. So how long are you guys thinking? Because I know you said you went back and you were gonna get normal jobs. That's like me when I moved to Germany. I'll stay for eight months. <laughs> 13 years later. <laughs> so how long are you guys thinking of, of doing this? And do you, do you have like a, a future plan other than building amazing online shops and e-commerce services for your clients like OBS, but anything else? No, I mean, we don't really have a, I think that's kind of the beauty of it. We just sort of roll with the punches and see what happens. And when we get tired or when we want to settle down somewhere, or if we want to buy a houseboat. I don't know. It's just, we, we're sort of just really open to whatever happens and what, what opportunities or what experiences come up. So we've learned not to really, I mean, planning a couple of months ahead or a year or something, but to look into the future and say what we're going to be doing in five or 10 years is really difficult because we really don't know. You never know what's going to happen. Some kind of opportunity may come up and you end up taking that direction and it could be totally different than the path you thought you were on. It's just being open to whatever experiences come your way. I think that's the best thing. Meeting people, you never know if you're going to meet someone or something like that. Okay, y'all. I just got really, really still for anyone not watching the video. And I got really still because I was so damn excited. Girl, you said you don't know what opportunity is going to come up. Not what obstacle, not what problem, not failure. You're like, there's a world of opportunities. I don't know what they are, but they're going to rock my world. That for me is such a sign that people are living in their magic and their values and their service to the world. That is so beautiful. Yes, opportunities. Mm. So, okay. <laughs> so who is a role model of yours, a brave role model that you want to inspire other people maybe to think about their own role model or learn more about yours? Well, the one is, I don't know if you would consider him a role model as much as just someone I really admired and who kind of really led me down this path that I'm like, not led me down this path, but kind of a little bit because it's just the way it's Anthony Bourdain, oh, just wow. the way that he yeah. saw the world, the way he wrote about it, the way that did things that were different. And, you know, he was he was a drug addict and he was working like a grill shift and decided to write a book that totally changed his life. Got a show on the travel channel. Like there's just so many, you know, there's so many things that could have gone wrong, but he, he like did them in a totally different way. And I've just been, he's always just been somebody that I followed for a very, very long time. So 
And there's also uh, someone similar. Um, her name is Samantha Brown. So if you don't know who she is, she used to be, I watched her since she had her very first show on the Travel Channel in 1998. She oh did gosh. this like Passport to Weekends, I think it was called, it was her very first show. But she worked for the Travel Channel for about 10 years and she got fired. She could have at that point decided, I don't want to do this anymore. I had a good run or whatever. Mm -hmm. So instead, she created her own production company, had her own show that has now been on air for 15 years on PBS. She wrote a couple of books. She has her own luggage line on HSN. So she took this thing that happened and turned it into this massive opportunity. So yes, it sucked to lose my job, but I'm going to make this massive travel empire out of the whole thing. And now she got to drop the really, like on the travel channel, they made her be like this really good girl. Like she had to be like the girl next door. And now when she got her own show, she could drop the act, which is pretty cool. <laughs> which, which is, oh my gosh, which is probably why she got fired. So she's if not, it's an she act. doesn't have to pretend to be the good girl anymore. Yeah, right? Because when we try to shove ourselves into boxes and... She's, she's just very cool and very inspirational that she took this kind of unfortunate situation and turned it around into this, like, basically her own little empire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. What, first of all, love that. And if you're shoving yourself into a box for somebody else, break <laughs> it out because you'll be even more successful. And and the other thing that I want to, you know, it's a, it's a difficult topic, but Anthony, he, he killed himself, right? He died of suicide. And he left a lovely record of why yes. and the sensitivity and what was going on with him and his soul. And what I love about you bringing him to us as a brave role model is that nobody is perfect. And we are not perfect. We go through difficult times and our role models go through difficult times and our choices are ours and we can honor someone, we can appreciate them, we can learn from them, we can live in, in pieces of their footprints, and also not make the exact same choices at every turn of the road. And that story for me, you bringing him and his wholeness to us is such a wonderful reminder of that. There are no pedestals. There are only humans and learning and growing from each other in our humanness and choosing humans as our brave role models is probably one of the things I really want to encourage people to do. So thank you for that, that gift with Samantha and with Anthony. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Oh, so girl, where can people learn more about you and tell us more about your service right now, knowing that, you know, your company will continue to grow and your model will continue to shift. But for right now, where can people learn about you and how can they work with you? My website is just www.addtocartdesigns.com. I also do Facebook, Instagram, I build e-commerce stores on Wix, Shopify, WooCommerce through WordPress, pretty much any of the platforms I've worked on them. I also manage the shops and optimize them for like search engine optimization and all of that kind of stuff. Copywriting. I, I wear a lot of hats. Um, and I also yes, do, you do. Um, for, I also do writing. That's been coming, actually shifting a little bit in that direction too, as I've been doing a lot of writing. This particular client I just started working for now, I do product descriptions and blog posts for. I'm kind of pretty flexible if there's anything you need within your store, within your e-commerce store, even with you just looking to have a website done, I can definitely work together and see what we can come out of it. And, and then also my other part of my life is the good, the bad, and the booze, which is me and my husband's travel blog and travel company that we're coming up with. We travel. We like to try local drinks. We love meeting local people. That's basically what all of that is about. And that's at www.thegoodthebadandthebooze.com. You can follow us on Instagram at sjtravelagain, which is where we post all of our photos. So that's pretty much us. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that. And then I have one last question that I, I'm just inspired to ask, which is, did you ever think you would become a woman in tech? No. <laughs> <laughs> Me uh, either. <laughs> no. There's, I 
it's kind of one of those things like I when I was trying to figure out what to do online but this whole web design thing I I really enjoy designing websites and I like figuring out the plugins and then sometimes I'm like talking to my husband about it and I can see he's like turning off because I realize I'm getting a little too techy and then I even realize I'm getting a little techy I'm like how did this happen uh yes 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 Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your story with us and your time. I really appreciate it. Well, I, it was fun. Thanks for having me. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure. And with that, enjoy the rest of your days. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Celebrate Brave podcast. If you're ready to build your brave to live a life you love and create a career that matters to you. Reach out. Together, we can spend time one-on-one to explore how I can help you. And until then, share this episode with people in your life, people who can join our movement to redefine brave, how we identify it, experience it, and celebrate it.